I'm Andrea. Man, something doesn't feel right. Hang on a second. This is more like it. You will not believe how much they took from here. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Andrea. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me in the Babe Cave. This is not my typical videos that I put out, but a lot of people want information about my surgery. And so I thought, well, I have this platform to help others and uh, tell you about my journey uh, to getting the breast reduction. So I am not a doctor. I am just a patient and I'm going to share with you my experiences that happened only to me. I can't say that you will have the exact same experience as me. So I hope this helps if you're ever considering this surgery and I will wrap that all my thoughts up at the end of what I think of my new self. <laughs> And uh, don't forget to hit the like and give me a thumbs up and subscribe and also grab you a drink because this might be kind of long. So I'm going to start from the beginning and I've had a bigger chest for probably close to 15 to 20 years and I never really contemplated this surgery until... A few years back and I still was unsure because I thought about okay I'm gonna have scars and I'm going under the knife I mean they're going to open me up and remove you know fat tissue and um, so I was too scared for years and I just decided I'm, I'm just gonna live with what I got well then we moved forward about a year and a half ago I have had lower back pain for every single day for a year and a half and I was taking medicine prescribed by my doctor for the back pain and then my shoulder started hurting and I have a primary doctor that you know suggested getting a reduction and I'm like I was really scared, but I was ready to make the decision at that point because I was tired of the back pain. My posture is terrible. I'll get to that weight here in a minute, but <laughs> there were a lot of factors that finally I'm like, let's just do it. So I was on board, ready to do it. I used my insurance, so I used a plastic surgeon within our insurance network. And that's another story I'll get to in a minute. So she referred me to a doc, a plastic surgeon. My first consultation was in April. And basically they do measurements and uh, based on your weight and in how big your breasts are, uh, they calculate a number for insurance that I was way over <laughs> what qualified for a reduction covered by insurance. I didn't go the cosmetic plastic surgery route. I didn't want to spend the over $9,000 for the surgery because this is a breast lift reduction. I mean, and uh, lipo, like all three in combined into one surgery. Before she referred me, I had to get x-rays on my back and I have a narrowing spine, probably because of the weight, and uh, I had to get my mammogram done. Some insurance talk about getting uh, physical therapy, but honestly, there's there was no therapy that was going to fix what has been done to my back. <laughs> so, other than a reduction. I had to talk about the grooves in the shoulders, the under you know, lines where you sweat and it's red and the back pain and the shoulder pain. It's all part of what insurance needs to get it approved. Well, insurance uh, was not easy. I'm just going to put that out there. W my initial surgery was supposed to be in July and it didn't happen till October because 
insurance loves to deny these procedures. They claim to have a doctor look over your chart of, you know, your measurements and everything. And I was denied because there wasn't enough that the plastic surgeon didn't send enough for them to approve it. But in the beginning when I, I'm going to rewind, I forgot. They claim that this plastic surgeon was out of network. And so that was about three or four months of them finally figuring out that it is within network. And so then, like I said, they denied me once because they thought it was out of network. And second, there wasn't enough on the, they're very particular about what you have um, to get the approval from insurance. So at that point, my primary doctor went ahead and uh, saw me again. She's like, I'm going to send it into insurance this time. Because by this time, you're about to give up. And don't give up. Whatever you do. I have a husband that fought for me since April <laughs> to have this surgery. He was not going to give up. And you have to keep calling your insurance. You got to find out what they need. You got to talk to your plastic surgeon. Tell them what you need. And finally, my primary doctor wrote all the bullet points that they needed. And I got approved, obviously. <laughs> a lot of people give up the insurance route. But if you hound and hound and have the right doctors that have your back, then you will get approved. But it is, it's, it's not easy. So insurance got, approval came through. My surgery date came October 3rd. So I'm about a week and a few days past right now. And insurance paid almost all of my surgery. So it is worth fighting for yourself through insurance. I know it stinks, but do it. <laughs> so now we're, I, I'm approved. I'm ready to go. Here comes surgery day. You can't drink anything or eat anything past uh, midnight was for me. So, and my surgery wasn't until 1230 the next day. <laughs> but your, your emotions and nerves you don't even think about eating or drinking. Drinking was hard. I love my water. But <clears throat> so surgery came and I ended up getting the anchor and you can Google that or whatever you want to do. But that's what they had to do for me because I told the doctor, the surgeon, I said, I want perky. I want a C cup and I want them symmetrical. And he said, okay, I can do, I can do perky and I can do symmetrical. C cup, eh. Well, I don't know what I am now because you have a lot of swelling. So there's not, you don't know your size at this early stage. But I think he took a lot. And again, I was very top heavy. And I knew that I wanted a lot gone. And... I went down probably four sizes at least, probably. <laughs> and I still don't even know my current size. So, so he marks me up for surgery. They draw lines and the the whole thing, you are got marker all over you. And then uh, the next thing I know, I'm being wheeled out and... I remember the room and all these people being in there and these giant lights, but then after that, I was out. <laughs> the surgery took two hours or maybe a little over two hours, and it took me about an hour and a half to wake up from anesthesia. <laughs> Apparently, I am not so great with anesthesia, and they did put a patch behind my ear for nausea because I wasn't sure. I've never been in a surgery besides getting tubes in my ears and then uh, I, I don't know how I would have reacted to anesthesia. I was like eight or nine years old. Uh, got a nausea patch, the surgery, and then I wake up and I'm sweating. <laughs> I just remember I was sweating hot and I didn't know what was going on. I just wanted, I s told the nurses, I'm like, where's my husband? <laughs> That's what I remember. And I remember something being on my back. Well, I didn't know what it was like you're you're out of it so much and it was um they put ice packs on my back because I was 
very, very sweaty. I was so hot <laughs> coming out of that anesthesia. And finally, my husband shows up and he saves the nurses because <laughs> he he's just a action. He's like, I will take care of her. And so he got me dressed. I don't even remember it. I went to the bathroom. Don't even remember it. <laughs> the ride home, I was like, the, they had given me my uh, oxycodone before I left and it hadn't kicked in. So I was in pain. And I on the drive home, I don't hardly remember the drive. And then all of a sudden I'm in the bed and I'm asleep. <laughs> and while you're under, you're also getting IV fluids um, because you're dehydrated and so they rehydrate you with a lot of fluids. And so no one ever said this in videos that I've watched that you, uh, every time you wake up from the first night, you have to go to the bathroom. Like, I don't know how many times I woke up my husband at, at later even because you're empty in your bladder. So beware of that. So I basically only took the hydrocodone was the prescribed medicine. They gave it to me and I only took three doses of it and because I didn't want to not pass a bowel movement <laughs> and I knew that my husband can manage my pain with ibuprofen and Tylenol and my back pill that, and so I only took three doses of that and I'm really glad I did. So anyway, taking those for long periods of time backs you up. So for if you're considering the surgery, try not to take it so much <laughs> if you can handle the pain because the first three days are the worst of the pain for me. And by the fourth day, I wasn't even napping anymore. And the pain was probably down to like a two or three. And right now, I'm not in pain. Usually at night is when everything swells and you're laying there. And that's when you feel a little more pain through the nighttime. So that's when I really needed the ibuprofen and the Tylenol. The second day, uh, we... <laughs> My husband, you know, washed me off really, really carefully. He took such great care of me. You all know how supportive he is. You've seen him. <laughs> and he is like that every day. Every day of whatever I needed, he was there. And he uh, helped wash me and we took off the, the compression bra and I saw him for the first time and I was like, whoa. <laughs> it was a little shocking because you get used to your body one way and it looks completely different and they're a little bit misshapen because of just having surgery. They're not going to be automatically just round beautiful breasts. After that we put it back on. I still was so happy that I did it. I, I knew I was in pain but it it's worth it. It is totally worth it. If you were a bigger size like I was, then going to this size is drastic. <laughs> they also, during surgery, put a breathing tube down your throat. And not everybody gets that, I guess. Um, but I did. So the first two days, my throat kind of hurt. So advice here is to get some chloroseptic, spray it swish it around for a little bit and spit it out and I was fine after that. So chloroseptic healed any kind of throat pain. So the key to recovery for me was a lot of sleep. So if you're tired, sleep. Because sleep, when you're sleeping, you're healing. And all I really have now is some swelling on the sides and not very much bruising, but they cut you all the way over to the edge of, and for the anchor, for me, they, it's, the incision underneath is the worst pain because that's where your bra sits and it's uncomfortable while it's healing. But right now I'm, I'm okay. And like I said, usually it's at night when I feel some soreness and you'll get a little itchy. Just don't itch it. You know, take your ibuprofen and it 
it will subside watch a movie so you can get your mind off of it that's my advice and then more advice is when you're in this first week of surgery don't try to do too much lay there sleep do a little walk from the couch to the bedroom you know a few times but don't start doing chores or doing too much because you will feel it that night if you've done too much um, I did finally mop and uh, vacuum a little bit but that night I was a little sore on day six so I don't recommend you do very much at all on the first week. So day six I went to my post-op appointment and I was so nervous. I watched so many YouTube videos on people's journey and I was scared that they were gonna like rip all this tape off of me and like put new tape on me and what take out stitches I didn't know I didn't know what to expect so I was nervous well all they did was look at them <laughs> and I have dissolvable stitches and the tape will eventually fall off it's probably next week that I might not have any tape I don't know but they're starting to curl and that's normal and so I was freaking out for nothing because all they did was look at it and then if I had any questions or concerns that's when you talk to your doctor and I didn't really have any other than when can I sleep on my side <laughs> I miss sleeping on my side um, but I you're in so much pain I didn't realize it it would be easier to sleep on my back and put, I put two pillows along the side of me so I wouldn't turn to the side as well. That's a, another tip. And so you have pillows on both sides and your arms are up and away from the swollen part. And at this time, I have finally looked at my clinical notes from the plastic surgeon. And it showed how much they took from each breast. And like many of others one was bigger than the other and so I added up the grams I'll put it up here the grams and the total weight I went grams to pounds and it was over six pounds they took away from me six pounds I mean I'm even shocked about it so that is basically the beginning to the end so Overall, I am so happy that I did it. And now I've got to work on my posture because my posture has been terrible for years because I do not want my back to hurt. And it doesn't hurt. My shoulder doesn't hurt. I am so happy I did it. And if you're even considering it a little bit and your back's hurting, your shoulder hurts, I recommend doing it. It's totally worth it. I don't care about the scars. I don't know how much scarring is going to be there but they always have you know scar medicines that you can probably put on it but not right now and yeah I am super pleased with the outcome and yeah if you're even considering it watch a lot of YouTube videos like I did because <laughs> everybody's experience is different so now I'm going to answer a few of your questions from you guys Okay, Ola May asked if uh, it was a hospital stay or not, and it's an in-out surgery. I was at the surgery center five to six hours total and then at home. The scar thing, I think it depends on your skin type and color and, you know, it's if I look at a scar on my forehead or leg that's probably going to be how dark or light it's going to going to get but I have no idea on the scarring yet but I honestly don't care and her next question is what is recovery time the recovery time is four to six weeks of full recovery um I'm on to my second week now and they said after two weeks I could do very light walking doing about half of what I normally did at the gym. I'm not gonna push myself. I'm going to make sure that everything is healed before I even try to do weights or anything. So, but you can go on walks. Just 
not too far, not too long yet. So you just kind of work your way up is how I'm going to do it. <clears throat> Am I looking forward to bra shopping? <laughs> yes, I can actually bra shop. I mean, I had a hard time finding bras in the size. And I never knew what my size was because I would have to get a bigger band width to get a bigger cup size. And I was just large, okay? <laughs> and it, I just grabbed whatever fit me. So yes, I am excited that I can just shop anywhere and they'll have my size. <laughs> and she asked, are there clothes that you didn't wear or didn't feel comfortable in that I'm wearing now? Well, this one is definitely one of them. And I also wore a t-shirt yesterday that my emphasis has always been here. And now it's the belly, so I'm trying to lose weight now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep uh, keep on track. And uh, so, yeah, I'm excited to... I don't necessarily have to throw out a bunch of clothes. But they're just going to look different and feel different and I am going to love every part of that. I might even fit in a large shirt now. <laughs> and she asked it what my pain level was and I say it was 9 or 10 immediately when I woke up. About 4 or 5 hours later I'm at a 7, 8. And then day 2 probably around six, seven, day three, five. And then now I don't really, it's like a two or three currently. And like I said, it's been a week and a half. Overall, the pain, if you manage your pain, it's not as bad as you think. It's more of a soreness than pain. The surgeon did say that once you're healed and your nerves start connecting back up to your everything that that's going to be a little like pain it's going to be a small pain but it goes away so when they start really healing I'm probably going to feel that and there's a little bit of itching because it's healing <laughs> and I believe this was from MJ she asked did I re research a surgeon uh Yes and no. Uh, I, I got my primary doctor to refer me to the Dr. Barnes and I and my husband looked at his reviews <laughs> and all of them were so happy with the results. So I didn't see any negative reviews so I would suggest looking at reviews. What made me finally do this? My back. <laughs> That's my answer. My back could not would not handle my weight anymore. And my my husband always tells me, he's like, you have the strongest back muscles I've ever felt. <laughs> I had to, I had to keep my back strong. <laughs> so yeah, my, my back was like, nope, you're done. No more. So that was what actually made me do it. I think I answered all your questions. Um, if you have more, you can put them down in the comments down below. But I want to thank you all for all your prayers and thoughts and uh, well wishes of recovery. I, I thank you so much for caring about me and, you know, thinking about me. Because all those helped me, I think, as well and in the recovery. And I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. <laughs> I know it's different and I will have a handbag video next. I just wanted to share my journey. And you know what? Less is more. <laughs> okay, maybe not when it comes to these. <laughs> but when it comes to this, highly recommend. 10 out of 10, 5 stars, as my daughter would say. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video Subscribe to my channel if you love handbags, <laughs> and if you like a little odds and ends videos like this, um, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell, and if you have any questions or comments down below, just put them down there, and uh, I really appreciate all of you for subscribing and thank coming over to watch this long video. <laughs> so I'm going to sign off here, until next video, I will talk to you soon. Bye! 
do not like talking about poop. Um, 